My name is Michał, I work at Ecotel Technology, and I want to show you some non-trivial example uh, to when you can use a functional programming tools to separate the concerns in, in your software. And I will be using uh, free Monad and then freestyle library from Scala. Uh, but uh, for all of you who doesn't know Scala, and uh, let me know who you are, okay? So some of you doesn't, don't, don't really know Scala, so uh, the concept is what's important in this talk. So what, what I want you to take away from it is the, is the concept itself. How can we separate the concerns? And I will start by defining the separation concerns, but, but by defining what, uh, what, wh when the separation of concern is not there. What is our intuition be behind the separation of concern? So probably there was a time in your careers when you wanted to do a quick fix or do a very simple feature, and after some hours of, of coding, you ended up with a git status like that, all red changed files, and, and many, many failing tests. So this is, this is something that uh, was bothering the whole uh, industry, the, the programmer industry, uh, for many years. Uh, so Edgar Dijkstra wrote a paper in 1974 about just that, about separation of concerns. And he stated back then, uh, uh, what is the intelligent thinking approach to our software? So when we want to really think intelligently about the components in our software, we need to be able to think about just one aspect in isolation, and then another one, and then another one, and in isolation we need to be thinking about the connection between those, those things. So this is kind of approach that he, uh, he proposed, suggested back then, and we still don't really have the tools to do that. And we, more or less know how to separate the concerns. This is uh, like an obvious thing for us. For example, when we have a simple feature, uh, like a high-level logic, low-level logic, and we can draw the diagrams around and, and say that logging should be separated from the metrics gathering and uh, DB access should be uh, over here, right? Something like that. And all those aspects will be uh, isolated and separate. And of course, when we and I'll be using a diagram like that throughout the whole presentation. So the blue ones are the technical concerns and the, and the gray ones are business concerns. And this little arrow is that this one component knows about the other one. And the, the question for us and for you is, what are we aiming for? What do we want to achieve? We want to achieve separation of concerns and that means on this diagram that we want to achieve no outgoing arrows at all. So for example, in this example, uh, you see this red border around some of those components. That means they, are, they don't really know about anything more than themselves. So they are truly separated. So this is kind of thing, uh, holy grail for us. We want to achieve something like, like that. As many concerns as possible need to have this little border, so no outgoing arrows at all. And then we will be able, as Edgar Dijkstra said, to, to think intelligently about some of them, those red ones, for sure, because they don't know about anything else, and then they don't need to, okay? And this, this is kind of obvious, and for me it was very obvious throughout uh, all the, those years, but uh, recently I had an ep epiphany. Uh, this is not so obvious anymore, because we can't really see it in many, many code bases. So imagine that you are a landscape designer, right? So you design parks, and you, and parks are for people uh, recreation, so people need to, talk, uh, to walk and talk and you know, have, uh, have fun and uh, relax, basically. And uh, when you design a park and you design this little spot over here in the, in the center and wanted to have some grass, but then real life kicks in, people are in a hurry, they want to take shortcuts and they just go through this little center. So the park experience for the whole community deteriorates because this, the, from, uh, from, from the up perspective, from the top perspective, you just see lots of different uh, shortcuts and, and you know, people are just running around and no nice green fields. And the same happens in our software. So we can design the whole thing, right? So layer after layer, and this DB access is, is right here. So you, you need to go uh, over here so that the, the software from the top perspective looks nice, right? And clear, no shortcuts, no different, uh, different roads to achieve the same thing. But people are in a hurry, developers are in a hurry, and uh, yeah, here, you, here goes your abstraction. So we, currently this is still a problem. So we need to be thinking constantly about developer experience. And developer experience means our experience, a software developer that is currently writing a bunch of, of, of lines of code, uh, and the future selves and our colleagues in the future. So developer experience is very, very, uh, very important. Even under pressure, we need to be still consciously thinking about those things. And we want, 
if we don't have tools for that. So we still miss some tools. And free Monad is one of those tools. So this is not like silver bullet again, but this is one of the tools that can help us isolate the concerns, separate the concerns in our software. So I'll be using free as a concept here, but remember there are different tools you can, you can use. They are needed in order to, uh, for us, for the developer experience to be enhanced and so that our software looks better from the top perspective, even as the time goes, okay? So free, what is free? Uh, who knows what free monad is? Okay, so like a half a room, maybe, uh, maybe something around that, okay. So free is a value. So when you see something like that in Scala, free F and A, free is a value. Free describes the program. So this is a value that describes the program. And uh, this program will use F as an instruction set algebra instruction set, and A will be the value returned when this program gets execu executed at the end, all right? So when, whenever you see free F out A, uh, from A, sorry, it means that the, this is a description of, of a program which will return A. And uh, the journey for the presentation itself, I will show you an example, and I chose a non-trivial example to show you some very more advanced uh, things than, uh, you know, adding and, and uh, uh, ping-ponging or thing, things like that. We need to have uh, a better ap approach, and this the, those tools uh, help us when we get into more advanced uh, examples. So this kind of is a more, more advanced example. So I'll do a short introduction, and then we will implement, I will show you implementation of free applications uh, for this particular problem, and there will be 15 overlapping concerns. Some of them I will talk in detail, some of them I will just uh, mention slightly, but the whole concept is what matters. So we'll use cats and freestyle libraries uh, from Scala ecosystem. Then I will talk more about freestyle and the different approach and, uh, and tagless tag final. So, prisoner's dilemma. Again, very simple uh, problem. We have two prisoners and they are both separated from each other so they don't really know about uh, themselves and they are questioned, interrogated, and uh, in isolation. So uh, they can answer one, uh, they, they can answer in two ways. Either they can be silent or say that the other one is guilty. So in this one game, we have four possible outputs. So if both of them say that the, the other one is guilty, they just get three years in prison. If they both are silent, they will just get one year, so it's better one, and, uh, and of course, when one of them says that the other one is guilty and, and uh, the other one remains silent, then the, the one that said guilty wins, it, he walks, uh, walks off uh, freely, and the other one gets three years in, in jail. And of course, the, uh, the other way around. So the best strategy, unfortunately, when you want to mi minimize, is to say that the other one is, uh, is guilty. And uh, this is just one game. And there are many, many researchers around the world, world about how can we use this as a model for uh, more uh, problems that we can see in society. For example, the game of trust is one of them. Uh, one of them. So there, there are two, two, two people that are playing, there are two bots uh, that are playing number of games. And over the time, the strategies can change, right? So when, when I say that the other one is guilty, uh, or I, I remain silent and, and the, my friend also remains silent, we, got, we, we get one year. But what happens in the, if in the next, day, next game, I say that I'm silent and the other one says that my friend says that I'm guilty. So he gets uh, zero years and I get three years. So what should be my next move? What should I choose in the third round, right? So here's the, here's the strategy. Based on the previous ones, we need to somehow develop a strategy of our own to minimize the number of years that we get from the, those, those uh, different, uh, from all those years, uh, all those games. So let's try to create a whole in infrastructure for this kind of multiple games of Prisoner's Dilemma. And the uh, first one will be a hot seat game. So we are sitting at the, our computer, we are bored, we want to play a game, so we, uh, we play with, uh, with a computer, right? Uh, sorry, on one computer with our friends. And we, need, of course, need some kind of blanket to, to not show what we are typing into, but this would look like that in the console, because the console is what we can use uh, in the simple example. So hello, uh, Adam, and then the, the hello, Jane. And of course, we need to ask both of them about their decision in this particular one game. So this is the whole game that we want to implement in this, in this uh, um, section of the talk. So how would it lo look like 
if we just use plain Scala. So probably we'll need something like meet prisoner. Uh, yeah, a read line from the console, returns the prisoner, then get prisoner decision is the next one, which is just also reading from, from the console and returning a decision. Then we need a, a verdict function based on two decisions. We just return a, a verdict and uh, give verdict at the bottom is uh, just print lining the decision for this particular prisoner. So this is uh, the summary on one slide uh, with the implementations taken off and, we, and, and the whole program is at the bottom. So we are meeting the both, both prisoners, we are getting the decisions for both of them and then we are just giving them the verdict, right? So this is kind of a very, very simple implementation in plain scale. And uh, my question, first quiz for you guys is what, how many concerns uh, do we have in this, in this uh, particular uh, program that you can see at the bottom? So for, as a hint, hot seat game is one of the concerns. So the whole uh, algorithm of meeting two guys, then, uh, then checking the decisions, and then giving the verdict. How many concerns? This is one of them. Your slides say 50. Where? Sorry, I don't get it. <laughs> okay. Uh, my slides say four. Four blocks of code, sorry. Four blocks of code. So we can see that we have hot seed logic and then we need to be able to compute the verdict. So this, the, the whole thing, the whole verdict computation, this is a pure function, which I'll show in a, 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 in a bit. Yes, this is a pure, pure function. So this is a computing verdict and this is the only one that is separated because there are no outgoing errors. We just, uh, we don't need, need to know about any module at all. What we need to know uh, is we, uh, we are getting as an input both decision, decisions and the output is the, the, sorry, the verdict. So four concerns, one of them is separated, the pure function, and the other one is the player interaction so that we need to get a decision and we need to give a, give a verdict and the implementation of this interaction which is print lining and read lining. So a technical concern and a business concern, all right? And when we, uh, even for this simple example, if we use free, we can get rid of those, those two arrows and we'll get player interaction as another separated concern. So we'll get one just by using a different tool. So this is what I meant uh, at the beginning. So this is maybe a more advanced, advanced one, but it makes us, uh, makes us to think about the, the, the whole architecture of the software and maybe, maybe creating a new uh, separated concern. So let's try to implement the same thing, but using a free approach. So verdict will stay the same, this is just a pure function, so we'll just leave it, leave it out, the same implementation as, as before. And then player interaction, so this is when it gets crazy, this, this is where it gets uh, crazy. So this is how we encode the free uh, operations, free algebras in, in, uh, in Scala using a cats library. So this, the, the simple functional programming, functional programming library for Scala. Uh, so we have a trait, player, this is the name for the set of operations. And final class is, uh, we, we have three uh, final classes that are Im implementing this, uh, this player operation. So this is, this is those are just classes and you can read them as the name of the class is the name of the instruction, one particular instruction, and, uh, and the player is parameterized by a type. So this type in this player, the prisoner in this player, means that the, the whole meet prisoner instruction, when it gets executed, it will return the prisoner. Okay, so we have three operations, meet prisoner, get prisoner, decision and give verdict. And give verdict, as you can see, extends player of unit. That means that the, the, the instruction when it gets executed will return unit because this is a kind of side, side effect underneath. But this is just encoding. That is, that those are just pure, pure, pure values. All right, and in Scala, uh, don't worry about that, uh, but I need to tell you that we need to get some boilerplate in, in, in Scala and we'll talk about it in, in a bit. The, the more important thing is how we encode that. So this is what we really be using. The boilerplate is, is not really important right now. So how will the program look like? So we'll not call the functions as before, meet, meet, get prisoner, get prisoner decision, get prisoner decision, and give verdict, give verdict. We need something different because we are not now uh, creating values. 
we are not creating values. So the same program will look like that. So we'll need to use for comprehension, just the same as, in, uh, as do in Haskell for those of you who don't, don't really know Scala. So the, uh, like do notation. Uh, so we are creating just meet prisoner, meet prisoner, get prisoner decision, the same kind of structure of the code is there. But right now, we, the, our function returns free of player of unit. That means it returns a value that describes the program. And the program is uh, based on the player, free of player unit means again, uh, the player is the instruction set and the unit is the value that will be returned when this program gets executed uh, finally. So that uh, we are using uh, for comprehensions, that means there are pure no effects because this program uh, doesn't really run, it's just uh, a description. So now what we need to do, we need to create an interpreter for that. So we know that we have three operations, meet, get decision and give verdict in our player operation set. So right now what we need to do is we need to kind of transform that natural transformation into something that will that can be executed because for now, uh, until now we just have uh, descriptions. Meet prisoner is just a description, it's, it's, it's a case class, right? So we need to be able to interpret each of those operations into something that will get executed and be side effecty enough to uh, have a game, working game using the console. So we'll transform that into I.O. and I.O. in Scala and, Ka and Katz I.O. is just something that, uh, that we can wrap the, the block of code in and this block of code will not be executed when we create it. It will get executed at the end of the world which I will show you at the end. So this is one of the, the techniques that, that we are using in order to have like pure functions and, and pure transformations without the side effects. So let's try to implement this, this interpreter player into IO, so player operations, free operations, again into IO. So each of them we need to implement uh, like pattern match. If it's a pre mid prisoner, then we can print line, print line, get line, things like that in, in, an, in an IO. So what IO of A means is it, it is a description of a, of a side effect -y kind of block of code, which will return A uh, at the end of the computation. So that's, that's the whole, whole thing. So again, we are using types in order to describe the values, uh, the, the, the programs, the computations, sorry. So connecting the dots. Again, we can, can see the same, the same application, hot seat game, two players playing at one computer, and, uh, and uh, those, those four uh, concerns are now implemented using the free approach. So we can see verdict is a pure function, hot seat logic is this program in the for comprehension which returns a unit, and the player interaction is our, uh, our free, uh, free of player program which can be interpreted into IO. And that's, that's all. So we can now run it, finally. So let's run it. Program, uh, this is the function that we created using the for comprehensions, it returns free of player of unit. So when we run something like that, nothing happens, the program exits and that's all, no game at all. Because this is just a value. So we need to fold map it, fold map it. it means interpret it in, uh, using our player console interpreter. So we are inter interpreting that into IO. So if we run that, nothing happens, program exits and no game at all. What we need to do is we need to run this IO. So we need to unsafe run synchronously and we'll get unit at the end, this is what what we really wanted to achieve, and the some side effects, uh, yeah, which were also very important, right? So those, those side effects is the game in the console that we, that we get. So practical problems were free again. Uh, the only one is that the boilerplate is in, in Scala, and of course some additional thinking that we need to do in order to create those, those concerns. But this additional thinking is not a problem because this is what we really need. This is what makes us think about our software more often. But the good, good news is that the freestyle library for Scala, which is uh, pretty new, it uh, came out last year for the first time. Uh, it's based on the, what I shown you, so it's based on the CATS library for Scala, but it, uh, it, it does some additional things to eliminate the boilerplate, for example. So let's see how it uh, eliminates the boilerplate. This is the same set of operations you saw a few slides back, but using the freestyle. So as you can see, we have this uh, at free trade player, that means a player instruction set, and those three uh, uh, operations. But right now, instead of doing final case classes, we are doing just uh, methods, right, or functions. 
And this uh, at three in Scala is a, is a macro, which really what it does, it creates all the boilerplate and in final case classes I will show you uh, in, in just a minute. So we have those three operations. We need to do exactly the same because we are re-implementing the hot seat game again in using freestyle and we'll use freestyle toward, uh, until the end of the presentation. So how the interpreter looks like. Before we had like case, uh, pattern matching and cases. Right now, we just we just need to implement those those methods for this particular interpreter. So this the implementation is the same. We are using I/O as our target type to in interpret into. But as, as you can see, it looks more natural, right, for uh, for many of us. So so this is our application right now. We can play on one computer using two players. We need to cover ourselves to, in order to not uh, for the other one to not see what we are choosing. Uh, so maybe it's not a good game, but, but yeah, we are having fun. So we all know that when we create the first version, uh, the infinite stream of new features are coming into the software. Uh, and we want to simulate it right now. So what happens when we can't really play with uh, another player? We need to, we still are bored, we have just one computer, no player at all, we need to be able we need to be able to implement a bot, right? So this would look like that. We can, we can introduce ourselves, hi, I'm Michal, and then uh, I need to answer whether Wall is guilty or not, or not. So I don't know what's the strategy behind this bot. I don't care. This is a program that I want to use and play. So let's try to implement that. And we'll try to reuse as many components, as many concerns as we have already had. So uh, we need to reuse the computing verdict. We will use, reuse that. We will reuse the player interaction and the interpretation, communication in the console. And uh, the other ones will need to be written from scratch. So let's uh, first write our uh, algebras. So let's try to write operations. So as you can see, we'll just write additional operations. We'll not change uh, at all the code that we've already written. So opponent meet opponent and get opponent decision. Those are those two operations that we really need in order to have a working, uh, working game. And uh, the program, the program itself, as you can see in the dev program at the, at the bottom, we can see that the, we have a player instruction as implicit uh, dependency. And uh, the second dependency is this new opponent, uh, opponent uh, instruction set. So in total, we have three instruction sets from player, uh, three instructions from player, and two instructions from opponent. We are importing them, and we can create a program uh, using, this, using this approach. So let's see how it looks like, and I will need your help in order to implement that. So let's create the program. What should we do? Uh, we are meeting this new opponent, and so maybe opponent, that means that we, we get an option, so we need to map it. And there are two cases, right? When there's, there's uh, opponent, we need to create a, a new program because this is a, a new program. So we are new using for comprehension. So what should we, what should we really do here? We have this uh, meet prisoner is already being, ex is already executed. So we have met the local player. And now we know in this uh, seven, line 17 that we have a new opponent and we, we can use it. So what we need to do in our application right here? Get player decision. So let's get the decision uh, for the local player, and what's the next step? So, uh, louder? Yes, thank you. So now the open decision, and what we need to do here. Remember, this is a game with a with a unknown opponent. That that's what it what is called the unknown opponent, right? So it 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 is about at the beginning, but we'll implement the different uh, things uh, later on. So this is unknown opponent. We don't know who it is. Um, so what we need to, right now, we know the local player, right? So what we need to tell the local player? Verdict. Yeah. Verdict using the same, uh, the same function, player decision and opponent decision, which we should get from where? From here. So yeah. Uh, and of course. So as you can see, when I say something like that, that means that this, this is a result from this computation that I don't care about, right? And 
if we, I care about this reason, I should name though those variables and uh, player opponent decision. Yeah. So right now, player decision, opponent decision, give verdict, verdict, player decision. Now, uh, it doesn't work because we need to yield. We need to yield something. So remember, this is uh, this is a one case, right? For 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 the mapping. We are giving verdict, so what's uh, kind of result give verdict with such a signature, prisoner decision, and other prisoner decision. Sorry. Okay, yeah, but we need to tell what player, uh, what player we are uh, giving the verdict for, and this should go right here. So we, when you go uh, to the verdict signature, you need to tell uh, that the verdict is for this player and the verdict is what we are computing here. So now it compiles. We are yielding unique because the whole computation will be uh, a unit. So again, what we are doing here is we are mapping the opponent to the program that returns a unit because this is a program. So uh, what's the other case? So get or else, what should we do when there, are, there is no opponent? Unknown opponent, so it may not be there. The bot cannot be created or the player over the network is not found or cannot cannot right now uh, play right now. What should we do? This is one of the one of the, the possibilities. We need to pass a program here, right? So again, a function that will return a free value. Uh, right now, I'm just recursing over, so creating a new game and waiting for a new player. So this is how it this is how it looks like. It should uh, work work very fine. So as you can see, this uh, this uh, is something that we can use. So the program is a value. We can pass them around and have fun. So this is, uh, this is me playing the, the hard ball on, on, this, on this bot. So I walk off freely and the bot uh, unfortunately needs to stay three years in, in prison. So let's go back to, to the slides. We implemented this and uh, yeah, it looks something like that. Maybe uh, uh, on the slide it looks uh, a little bit better because I didn't make so many <laughs> mistakes. But I, I need to tell you a story. So when I first came up, uh, came up with this uh, uh, implementation in our own uh, module uh, to the problem of concerns, and uh, I sent it over to, to one of my friends, and he responded me with a, in an image because he likes to do that. And the image I got is this, uh, is, is this one. So he didn't really like this whole four comprehensions and you know, uh, what I did here, those underscores, right? And mapping and get all else and, and you don't really know what's happening over here. So I argue that, yeah, it's not very uh, nice looking when you first look at it, but when you get f familiar with this whole approach, uh, it gets better. The four comprehension helps us to think about the software because what's inside the four comprehension is probably very pure, testable, and we can really think about it more intelligently because it's just one piece of code that we, and we know that it just creates a description for a program. It cannot, cannot do anything more. And when you are changing something, uh, a module that use, uses some kind of four comprehension, you cannot just put a, a, a you know, function, another function which is side effecting uh, in the, into the middle. You need to think about how, can you, how you, need, you need to wrap it in, in an operation, what this operation is, how it uh, really helps us here. So this is kind of uh, uh, approach that we are taking using this kind of tools. And uh, of course, single player program, uh, we, need to, we need to create uh, a program that uses both player and opponent for the type of the free. So as you can see, we are now using freeze, which is a freestyle version of free. Uh, it's more powerful. And we are using unknown opponents as our instruction set. That means that the player and opponent are both there, as you can see at the top. So again, we need to interpret it into IO using our uh, player console. And then we get console uh, compilation error. We get compilation error because just one set of operations uh, has already been in, uh, interpreted. It means that this player console handler is the only one that, is, uh, that, hand, that, that, that handles something. It handles the player operation and interprets this into IO. And we still need this bot stateful handler, which interprets opponent into IO, okay? So uh, this is a simple implementation using var and bots and map and, and with some, some kind of strategies. And uh, doesn't really matter. This is just one piece of code in one place Somebody would need to think about the strategies and, and, thing, and things like that. So we just put it here and we can run our, 
uh, our application. So this is our single player application where we use as many things as we, as we could, created a new algorithm and created a new bot handler uh, the print lines and all those things are the same. So the workflow is as follows. Define the operations using this uh, the, the at free or final case classes. Uh, create programs using these four comprehensions. Then try, try to run them and the compiler will tell you which handler is still missing. Implement the handler into I.O. or something like that. And uh, re repeat until you get a successful, uh, successful game. So uh, I spoiled you a little bit at, at at the beginning of this section that I will need another, another interpreter for the opponent. Opponent again is meet opponent which returns an option and get uh, opponent decision. And the other one is a remote opponent. So what we need to do right now is we need to uh, create a game which, which is a multiplayer network game. Okay? And we'll use ACA uh, to do that. But the ACA will be just in one piece of code over, over here. The whole application will be just the same as the, the bot application. Nothing really changes. And of course, we need to think in intelligently about that. So let's create, uh, w let's think about how the algorithm for uh, meeting the, the new remote opponent would look like. So player A and player B, uh, the player A needs to register, and then the player B needs to get the, the waiting players and join if there's a player that, that is waiting. <laughs> And uh, the other one needs to check whether someone joins or not and unregister when the, the, the new game is created. So this is, uh, this is kind of approach that we can take. And of course, when, you do, when we do that, we can just encode it using our free approach, uh, which is just a new set of instructions, a new algebra matchmaking that has those five functions, right? Five functions. Uh, one of them is wait for opponent uh, functions, those three, uh, three ones, register, check, and unregister. And second one is for finding the opponent, get waiting player, and join, uh, and join the player. So right now, we didn't really have anything uh, about ACA, about network, about TCP, HTTP, anything like that. We are just creating a descriptions, uh, instructions which can be used. So we can use those, uh, those, those, those functions, those instructions, without implementation. That's the whole point, right? So let's try uh, to create a, new, create a new program. Find opponent program that uses this uh, match matchmaking operations. So what it does, it just waits for the players and then when, it, when the opponent is found, uh, it joins the player and if not, waits for another one. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you can see get or less again with a free, which is another one, another program. So we are creating a program which has a program inside and all those instructions are really a programs which are free. So we are passing free around and returning free. Uh, that means we are passing programs around and return uh, free programs, which can get kind of crazy. Uh, but this is what we really need because we need to reuse them as much as possible. So we need to be able to uh, treat them as values. So we focus on matchmaking. And uh, remember this bot, uh, uh, stateful handler, which also uh, implemented the same opponent operations. And now we created a new set of operations for matchmaking, right? So what we can do is we, we need to somehow connect those, those, th th those things together. We need to connect the remote player uh, with a uh, remote opponent uh, concern with our new matchmaking uh, operation set. So what we need to do is we need to interpret our remote opponent concern into another program. So we are not at the top of the, of the, of the screen. We are not in interpreting into I.O. We are interpreting into free. So we are interpreting free program into another free program. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. So let's, uh, let's look at it from, from the diagram perspective, which may be more clear. clear. Again, we, need, we did have this unknown opponent logic and opponent interaction. Opponent interaction is just two, uh, two uh, operations. Meet prisoner and get prisoner's decision. And we get this bot opponent interpreter, which was this var state map and all those crazy things with the variables. And right now we have remote opponent. So this is, uh, this is the one that we will interpret it into free. And this free is a matchmaking program. So a program based on matchmaking. So right now what we need, we have all those blocks together, connected together, and only the one that is missing is what really 
what it means to have uh, to uh, register as a waiting player, unregister and unregister as a waiting player, and things like that. So only those five instructions from matchmaking is what we uh, really need to interpret, interpret into in order to have a fully functional, fully working implementation of a multiplayer free, uh, free prisoner's dilemma. So let's do that. Let's create this one missing bit, which is a re remote actor matchmaker. Again, those five operations look like that. And our handler for them looks like that. So register as waiting is just this exclamation mark is sending message over. Uh, and this is wrapped in I.O. And unregister is also sending a message to the server. And uh, what else? Asking server for, for the uh, waiting players. So as you can see, not very, very complicated because we uh, constrained ourselves to just think about implementing those five operations. And we don't really care about how those five operations are used in the real program app uh, when we define the this find opponent and wait for opponent programs. So that's why we interpret it into different frees so that we can have very, very small pieces we can think about. So end of the world looks very, very similar as with the two other applications. Is uh, First, we need to have a free of unknown uh, operation that returns a unit. Then we are interpreting into free and we get another free, uh, but with different set of instructions, like the more low level things, those multiplayer operations. And then we are interpreting into IO, which is this thing that, that contains the, the, all those asks and uh, tells from the ACA and print lines and read lines, no matter what uh, you really uh, want. And we get this uh, unsafe run and sync at the end, and we get real, real side effects. So real game that works over the network using the uh, ACA remote module. So what we get, three game modes, 15 concerns, and uh, also each of them is uh, separately testable. And uh, in my GitHub repository, I will show you at the end, uh, although those tests are really implemented, so you can look at as a reference, how can you really test those separate, separated concerns in total isolation, and then you can connect uh, some of them together and test this connection also uh, in, 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 in very good isolation. So uh, we focus on, on small bit, bits, and we get all those ACAS, VARs, uh, end of the worlds, which are side effectful, and the print lines, fret sleeps, is, uh, there are some things I haven't shown you really, I don't have so much time. So this is what we really get when we can split our application using this very, very simple tool when you think about that, okay? So now, some of those things that are problematic with three have already been addressed, but freestyle gives us uh, more. So let's, let's go through at the, as a finishing note, let's go through some of those, those features. What can you really achieve? Composing algebras using modules that I uh, shown you, right? So we have like five different uh, operation sets and we want a function that uses them. So like dependency injection, some, something like that. So we don't really care about uh, how many of them are here. Uh, we just put them, put them there, we can use them. In the real pure cats, we'll need to really care about the order because uh, the other one way around, it won't compile. So this is a kind of boilerplate that freestyle eliminates. Another one, and uh, free approach is really a value, right? The program description is a value. So it creates lots of objects. So this is very GC heavy. So um, uh, we, we need to be able to understand that this is one of the uh, trade-offs that we are making. We, we have all those programs passing around, but those are just values we are creating. And uh, for each operation that, uh, that we are using, we are just creating an, another object. So in freestyle, we can use another approach, which is called final tagless. And this is very, very similar conceptually to free, but it doesn't have this, uh, this uh, drawback of uh, creating lots of uh, objects. So when you see the free program, right? So it mid prisoner is really re returning the free of S of a prisoner, right? And in final tagless, it looks like that. So very similarly, but instead of free, we have F. And F is, a, is this type parameter uh, with, a, with a hole inside, and that's all. So the conce concept is very, very similar. If we want to, for comprehension, we'll need to have uh, a, 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 another bound on, on this F type. But other than that, we, we use the same kind of approach, the same kind of thinking. But what we get uh, instead uh, is, uh, is uh, less GC heavy 
uh, operation. So if our program is really, really uh, GC heavy using free, we can think of uh, switching to tagless and in freestyle it's, it looks like that. So it looks like uh, just changing the uh, dot uh, free, uh, at free into at, uh, at tagless. So semantically they are very, very similar. They are the same and uh, there are different me me mechanics. So uh, my approach would be for all of you who just uh, first heard about free or freestyle or, or final toggles is to use a cat's library in Scala uh, directly with the boilerplate to you know to get the, the feeling then use final toggles directly uh, in any any language then when you want really to create Scala applications that are production uh, wise I, I hope I hope after understanding how Scala uh, Z or cats will work and how free is in, uh, implemented using this boil plate. Remove this boil plate and, uh, and have fun with, with freestyle. And then you can decide whether you want to use at, freestyle, at tagless or at free, uh, whether this is a GC heavy application or, or not. And uh, there are also some, some more concerns you need to take into account. Adam Varsky wrote a nice uh, blog post about that, comparing those two approaches. So I uh, really, uh, I really enjoyed reading that because it's, it's very, very nicely written. With the table, uh, I snapshot some of those, those points in, from the table uh, on the slide. So please have a look if you are really interested into comparing free and, and tagless. And of course, uh, the GitHub repository, uh, six applications because I implemented the free, application, the free applications and freestyle applications, so they are basically the same, so that you can see the difference between those two. And of course, freestyle is there to help, and all those tests I talked about are also implemented in both pure free approach and freestyle approach. Uh, and there are two actors which are all also tested because they are very, very small, so it's very, very uh, quick to do. So this is as a reference for the implementation, okay? My name is Michał, I work at Takado Technology, and uh, this is my Twitter and uh, my, my page, my blog, and thank you very much for your attention.